If I touch this one, if I destroy this one, if I persecute this one, if I defile this one, nothing will happen. Because I know what he did in the past. Now he is a chosen vessel. Belshazzar did not understand. You know what? Nebuchadnezzar ruled for 40 years, 40 long years. And it was at the beginning of the captivity, at the beginning of the rule of Nebuchadnezzar, he took all those vessels. And those vessels have now been laid aside for 40 years. And now Belshazzar started to reign. And he said, all these vessels, they've been there lying fallow. For all these 40 years, they don't have any value. They don't have any pleasure. God, does, God is not interested in all these, uh, all these vessels because for 40 years they have been staying there. Bring them out. I want to drink wine with them. That's what you think because that Paul the Apostle, chosen vessel of the Lord. What's going to happen to this? And we can do anything. And if you do that, insult him, defile him, persecute him then the hand of the lord touches you in a very terrible way i pray we'll learn our lesson i said we'll learn our lesson in first thessalonians i'm reading to you from chapter four we're looking at the vessel that we don't just take a vessel today the vessel of the law a child of god and then just do whatever we want insult them abuse them degrade them defile them persecute them in first thessalonians chapter 4 i'm reading from verse 3 and verse 4 for this is the will of god even your sanctification that she should obtain from fornication that every one of you should know how to possess what his vessel is sanctification and honor. That's why you cannot defile your body. That's why you cannot just mess up anyhow. That's why you cannot go into fornication, adultery, fornication, and then say, well, uh, God will forgive me. Yes, God can forgive you, but you'll suffer. Because the soul that sinneth, you'll, you'll, you'll find the rod of God coming upon you. Because you have taken that vessel that should be sanctified, honorable, holy. You've taken it, you've gone to defile it. I'm looking at Second Timothy chapter 2, the vessel. Second Timothy chapter 2, I'm reading from verse 21. Second Timothy chapter 2, verse 21. If a man therefore purge himself. From these, it shall be, it shall be what? Tell me out loud. A vessel unto honor. And when you read in the Old Testament that Belshazzar took the holy vessels, oh, and you say, well, why are we studying that? What do I need to do with that? Vessels, vessels, and then drank out of it. What does that mean today? Does that mean somebody taking the cup of the Holy Communion and then drinking maybe water or drinking whatever wine we say? It's more than that. It's more than that. Now, we are the vessel of the Lord. And if a man purge himself, cleanses himself, purifies himself from all these defiling things, he shall be a vessel unto honor. What's the next word? Sanctified. Sanctified. That means, uh, you know, you, you go to the Lord after salvation and the Adamic nature is dealt with. There is your putting of that Adamic nature and then it does circumcision of heart and it gives you a new heart, sanctified and then meat ready feet for the master's use. When it says for the master's use as a sanctified vessel like that, you are just for the glory of the Father, for the honor of the Father. And you are not to be used in defilement by anything in the world if anybody comes to you and then says i want to do that you say no i'm now a sanctified vessel honorable with ple pleasure and then it says your feet for every good work and profitable and prepared unto every good work i pray that will be your lord in jesus name we're coming back to daniel now daniel chapter 5 the supernatural finger and power of god that's point number two supernatural power a finger and power of god we're looking we're coming back to Daniel now. Daniel chapter 5. The supernatural finger and power of God. That's point number 2. Supernatural power, a finger and power of God. We're looking at Daniel chapter 5 verse 5. In the same hour came forth the fingers 
of a man's hand and wrote over against the candlestick upon the plaster of the wall of the king's palace and the king saw the part of the hand that wrote then the king's countenance was changed and his thoughts troubled him so that the joints of his loins were loosed and his knees moved one against the other. And you will see over here what happened. While he did that, judgment came immediately. The finger of the Lord began to write suddenly. At the height of his drunkenness, the king saw the fingers of a mysterious hand writing on the wall in front of him. The appearance of the fingers without the whole body of the writer frightening him, alarmed him. There were no claps of thunder. There were no flashes of lightning. There was, there was no sword drawn in the hand of the angel, of an angel. And there was no fire to consume and defile. But he was frightened all the same. And he became so feeble and faint hearted. His own hands and his own fingers had desecrated the vessels of God's house. And suddenly the fingers of God appeared to write his doom and his damnation. He was immediately seized with panic and uncontrollable fear. And he had no strength in him. He did not hear the voice of the great judge. Yet he was troubled and terrified. He did not understand what was written. Yet the joints of his loins were loose and his knees moved one against another. What shall it be on the judgment day when we shall see? Not only the fingers writing on the wall, but we'll see will hear, will feel, will know the power of an awesome God. The terrors of God are unbearable. Repent therefore. That's the message. The Lord says, we to repent. We ought to call upon the name of the Lord. We shouldn't wait until it becomes too late. When we talk about the finger of the Lord, what does that mean? It's, uh, that's identifying the power of God. Uh, they knew that in Egypt, look at Exodus chapter 8, verse 19. Exodus chapter 8, I'm reading from verse 19. It's telling us there, Then the magician said unto Pharaoh, This is the finger of God. When that judgment came upon, came upon them, the magician said, This is no other but the manifestation of the finger of the Lord. The same fingers that wrote the Ten Commandments will write the doom, the damnation, the condemnation of those who sin against those commandments. It's the finger of God that wrote the Ten Commandments. And those who sin against those commandments of the Lord, that same finger that wrote the Ten Commandments will write their condemnation and damnation. We're looking at Exodus chapter 31. Exodus chapter 31. We're looking at verse 18. And he gave unto Moses when he had made an edge of communion with him upon Mount Sinai to tables of testimony, tables of stone, reaching with the finger of God. Eventually, judgment came upon Belshazzar. Why are we studying that? So that we will escape the judgment of God. You will escape. I said you will escape. A man will be a foolish man. If he sees what has happened to another person, you know, somebody is going in front of you, and then he falls into a pit. That man will be foolish to still keep on going. You find Belshazzar going in front, and you see what he did. And then damnation and doom, condemnation, destruction came upon him. Everlasting punishment came upon him. Well, be foolish to then just follow Belshazzar and do exactly what he did. No, we're not going to follow what he did. We're going to escape the judgment of God in Jesus' name. Isaiah chapter 13 verse 6. Isaiah chapter 13. 
We're reading from verse 6. How will ye for the day of the Lord is at hand? It shall come as a destruction from the Almighty. Therefore shall all hands be faint, and every man's heart shall melt, and they shall be afraid, and pangs and sorrows shall take hold of them. That's exactly what happened to this Belshazzar. And they shall be in pain as, as a woman that travaileth. They shall be amazed one at another. Their faces as the flames. It tells us in verse 17. That same Isaiah 13, verse 17. Behold, I will stir up the maidens against them. We shall not regard silver, and as for gold, they shall not delight in it. Their bows also shall dash the young men to pieces, and they shall have no pity on the fruit of the womb. Their eyes shall not spare children. And Babylon, the glory of kingdoms, the beauty of the Chaldeans, excellency, shall be as when God overthrow Sodom and Gomorrah. And that's what Isaiah had said. And it came eventually upon them. We're looking at Ezekiel chapter 7. Ezekiel chapter 7. If Belshazzar had just read these verses that had been reaching before, he was even born. And he would have been able to escape the judgment of God. But he was uh, too busy with his wine and wives and women and concubines and everything that he didn't have any time to read all these warnings, the prophecies that warned him that judgment was coming. He didn't have time for that. How many people today are like that in the world? They don't have any time to read all these prophetical warnings that the Lord is giving us. And he's saying, this is what will be the Lord of the unbeliever at the end of time. And because they don't have time to read, they're not afraid of anything. They just live their lives in sensuality and fleshly carnality and worldliness. I pray that those of us who are taking time to read and to study these things, we shall escape in Jesus' name. We're looking at Ezekiel chapter 7 verse 17. Ezekiel 7 verse 17. All hands shall be feeble, and all knees shall be as weak as water. They shall also gird themselves with sackcloth, and horror shall cover them, and shame shall be upon all faces, and boldness upon all their heads. They shall cast their silver in the streets, and their gold shall be removed their silver and their gold shall not be able to deliver them in the day of the wrath of the Lord. That's exactly what happened to Belshazzar. His wealth, his gold, his silver, his money, his popularity, his position, they were not able to deliver in the day of the wrath of the Lord came and then was swept away into everlasting judgment and punishment. They shall not satisfy their souls, neither shall they feel their bowels, because it is a stumbling block of their iniquity. Look at verse 25, destruction comes. And they shall seek peace, and there shall be none. Mischief shall come upon mischief, and rumor shall be upon rumor. Then shall they seek a vision of the prophet, but the law shall perish from the priest, and counsel from the ancients. The king shall mourn, and the prince shall be closed of desolation and the hands of the people of the land shall be troubled i will do unto them after their own way and according to their deserts will i judge them and they shall know that i am the lord that's the judgment that came upon them and i pray that we will escape in jesus name i thought you'll say amen in Ezekiel chapter 21, Ezekiel chapter 21, I'm going to read to you from verse 7. The judgment that came and the supernatural power of God that came to bring this judgment upon them. In Ezekiel chapter 21 verse 7, And it shall be when they shall say unto thee, Wherefore sighest thou, that thou shalt answer, 
for the tidings because it cometh and every heart shall melt and all hands shall be feeble and every spirit shall faint and all knees shall be as weak as water behold it cometh and shall be brought to pass says the Lord all these things were reaching up for him. They were reaching before. Even Belshazzar had his fees. If he had known. If he had read. If he had studied. And he had partaking notes that these judgments will come. He would have been able to avoid that. Look at verse 23. And it shall be unto them as a false divination in their sight. To them that have, that have sworn oaths. But he will call to remembrance the iniquity. And that they may be taken. That he is called their iniquity, their sin, their evil. He will call everything to remembrance. Verse 24, therefore, thus says the Lord God, because ye have made your iniquity to be remembered, in that your transgressions are discovered, so that in all your doings, your sins do appear. In all your doings, your sins do appear. Everything they did, they mix their sin with it. Their transgression with it, the iniquity with it. It says everything you're doing, you'll see. I'm seeing your sin because I, because I say that ye are come to remembrance, ye shall be taken with the hand. It tells us in verse 20, in verse 25, and thou profane, wicked prince, whose day is come when iniquity shall have an end. Thus says the Lord God remove the diadem and take up the crown. They shall not be the same. Exalt him that is low and abase him that is high. I will overturn, overturn, overturn it and it shall be no more until it come whose right it is. And I will give it him. Verse 31 and I will pour out my indignation upon thee I will blow against thee in the fire of my wrath and deliver thee into the hand of the brutish men and skillful to destroy thou shall be for foil of a to, to the fire but that thy blood shall be in the midst of the land thou shall be no more remembered for I the Lord have spoken it that's a prediction of the judgment that was to come upon them. Now we're talking about the handwriting on the wall. Do you know that we ourselves, all of us who are here, all those who are living on the earth, everyone that has ever been born, everything you have done has also been reaching. And there is the judgment that is reaching against the evil that we have done. But in the case of Belshazzar, he had no remedy. There's nothing he could do about it because it was too late for him. But thank you, thank God, for you and for me, it is not late. I said it is not late. The handwriting that is written against you and against me because of what we did in the past, all have seen and come short of the glory of God. That writing, negative, that should bring judgment, the blood of Jesus today, tonight, can wash everything away. And God says, I will blot out your transgression. I will take away your sin so that it will not be remembered against you anymore. Glorious news, wonderful news that everything negative that has been written against you, against me, against us, tonight, everything can be washed away. And they'll be washed away in Jesus' name. Colossians chapter 2. Colossians chapter 2. We're looking at verse 14. Colossians chapter 2, verse 14. Blotting out the handwriting of ordinances that was, that was against us. Blotting out. Wiping out. Cleansing out. It is, this is your opportunity. This is our opportunity together. As the devil is bringing the condemnation in your heart. See what you have done. See what you have done. See what you have done. There are some people that are carrying the condemnation and the guilt. They are carrying that about as their shadow is following them. And they could have solved the problem. Just stop where you are. And in your room or in the church. Anywhere you are. Just say, oh Lord, I know Jesus died for me. And his name 
shall be called Jesus, for he shall save his people from their sins. And the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanses us from all unrighteousness. I sprinkle clean water upon you, and you shall be clean. From all your transgression, all your filthiness, all your idols, will I cleanse you. That cleanse is available today. I said it's available today. And whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be cleansed, shall be purified, shall be washed. Everything shall be taken away in Jesus.